everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have been reading through Neville Goddard's book, The Power of Awareness, which is truly a powerful book. If this is your first time tuning in, I'm Corinne. I'm a huge Neville Goddard fan. I've been studying his work for almost about two years and it has totally transformed the way I view the world. Um, we really do create our world from the inside out and our world is our outer world is a mirror, a reflection of our inner thoughts, our inner beliefs, our inner assumptions. And I want you to take this journey with me through this book and slowly begin to transform your inner conversations and beliefs so that they serve you, so that you live the life of your dreams. All right, so let's dive into it. Uh, we are going to be reading chapter six. Uh, number five, the truth that sets you through free. If you have not listened to that um, episode, please do so. Um, I read through it yesterday and I just kept rereading through it throughout my day and listening to it. And I can tell you that the truths that are in there are phenomenal and they really, really sh help shift your paradigm into what's happening on the outer world. All right. Chapter six, Neville Goddard, attention. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James 1, 8. Attention is forceful in proportion to the narrowness of its focus. That is, when it is obsessed with a single idea or sensation, it is steadied and powerful, powerfully focused only by such an adjustment of the mind as permits you to see one thing only. For you study the attention and increase its power by confining it. The desire which realizes itself is always a desire upon which attention is exclusively concentrated. For an idea is endowed with power only to the proportion to the degree of attention fixed on it. Concentrated observation is the, attention of the, is the attentive attitude directed from some specific end. The attentive attitude involves selection, for when you pay attention, it signifies that you have decided to focus your attention on one object or state rather than another. Therefore, you know what you want. You must deliberately Focus your attention on the feeling of your wish fulfilled until that feeling fills the mind and crowds out all other ideas of consciousness. The power of attention is the measure of your inner force. Concentrated observation of one thing shuts out other things and causes them to disappear. The great secret of success is to focus the attention on the feeling of the wish fulfilled without permitting any distractions. All progress depends upon an increase of attention. The idea which impels you to action are those which dominate the consciousness, those which possess the attention. The idea which excludes all others from the field of attention discharges in action. This one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind, I press towards the mark. This means you. This one thing you can do, forgetting those things that are behind, you can press towards the mark of filling your mind of the with the feeling of the wish fulfilled. To the unenlightened man, this will seem to be all fantasy, yet all progress comes from those who do not take the accepted view nor accept the world as it is. As was stated heretofore, if you can imagine what you please, and if that forms and if the forms of your thought are as vivid as the forms of nature, you are, by virtue of the power of your imagination, the master of your fate. Your imagination is you yourself, and the world as your imagination sees it is the real world. When you set out to master the movements of attention, which must be done if you would successfully alter the course of observed events, it is then you realize how little control you exercise over your imagination 
and how it is dominated by the sensory impressions and by drifting on the tides of idle moods. To aid in mastering the control of your attention, practice this exercise. Night after night, just before drifting off to sleep, strive to hold your attention on all the activities of the day in reverse order. Focus your attention on the last thing you did, that is getting into bed, and then move backward in time over the events until you reach the first event of the day, getting out of the bed. This is no easy exercise, but just as specific exercises greatly help in developing specific muscles, this will greatly help in developing the muscle of your attention. Your attention must be developed, controlled, and concentrated in order to change your concept of yourself successfully and thereby change your future. Imagination is able to do anything, but only according to the internal direction of your attention. If you persist night after night, sooner or later you will awaken in yourself a century of power and become conscious of your greater self the real you. Attention is developed by repeated exercise or habit. Through habit, an action becomes easier and so in course of time gives rise to facility or faculty, which can then be put to higher uses. When you attain control of the internal direction of your attention, you will no longer stand in shallow water, but will launch out in the deep of life. You will walk in the assumption of the wish fulfilled as on a foundation more solid even than earth. That's the end of that chapter. So Neville articulates that we must direct our attention. We must cultivate the strength of our attention and that it is the power of attention by concentrating on the feeling of the wish fulfilled and permitting to focus on it until the wish is attained. That is the level of attention that we all need to cultivate in order to put our great imagination to work and create our desired wishes. Let me know what you think. I already know that I'm thinking that by having a definite major purpose, by having a concept of yourself, by identifying, by closing your eyes and creating that scene of what your life looks like as the new you by stepping in to this and assuming the feeling of who you are now that this is your reality and going back to it and concentrating your attention on it that is how we shift our world that is how everything is shift is by identifying with these self concepts and if you want to change who you are, you create a new identity and you step into it repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly until it takes on all the tones of reality and conforms to your new identity. That is law. It must happen. It must be so. And that is what Neville Goddard teaches. So I invite you to subscribe. My name's Corinne. I am a huge Neville Goddard fan. I am going to be continuing to read through this book. So go ahead and hit the like button. Leave me a comment below so we can um, see what your takeaways are. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. All right. See you next time.